Sometimes there's nothing more terrifying than the lengths an ordinary human will go to follow orders they've been given or to ensure that what they believe is to be the greater good. I did not know what to expect going into Jin Ro, the Wolf Brigade. I had vague memories of seeing pieces of this movie many years ago, but it was never one that I went back to to check out until now. As I continue my series of reviewing and giving the spotlight to many classic 80s and 90s anime films, paying tribute to a bygone era of brilliant hand-drawn animation and incredible storytelling, one of the most requested movies has been this one. And after sitting through this film, thinking about all the possibilities of what I thought it would be, seeing the iconic image of this armored police unit that is the forefront of all the posters and clips, all of my expectations were shot into oblivion and left broken on the sewer floors. But I do mean that in a good way. The story is entirely fictional, but the world the movie creates is brutally realistic. And considering some of the events that have been happening even in my own country within the last few years, maybe a little bit too close to home. See, what I did not know is that this movie is just one piece within a much larger franchise that takes place within this alternate history world. Jinro has a manga, it has live action films, and a lot of media that is very hard to find. I will not pretend to have any knowledge about any of them because I have only just seen this movie. And just recently, I might add. But this movie works perfectly well on its own and I don't believe that it requires any previous knowledge of the source material. But I am also not ashamed to admit that there were a few moments within this film that I was confused as to what was happening. Maybe that's just my natural response to listening to political dialogue, or maybe that's partially intentional since there are so many different groups with ulterior motives and multiple characters that are playing on different sides and hiding their true selves. An entire theme of this movie is not knowing who to trust, but also that those whom you should find some comfort in could actually be the wolf in hiding ready to devour you at any moment. Jinro takes place about a decade after the atomic bomb dropped in Japan, except in this story, it was not only the Germans that dropped the bomb, but also them who claimed the victory at the end of World War II. Though this film takes place entirely in Japan, it is funny how the iconic suits of the Kiberos cops deeply remind me of an advanced Nazi soldier look. Maybe I'm just thinking about the movie Sucker Punch too much, as I often do. I don't know. But the Cabarrus Panzer Cops, as they are called, are an elite branch of military that fight against the terrorism that's happening on the streets and below it. It opens with a ton of riots happening in the streets, the people fighting back against the injustice they feel has taken over their country, but pushing the boundaries by using even more violent means. The Cabarrus Cops decked out from head to toe in armored suits that are all but impenetrable and carrying massive weapons to mow down anybody who dares fight against them. The masks allow all their humanity and expressions to be hidden, the red eyes making them look like monsters as they hunt down their prey. They are a no-nonsense team that works within the parameters of black and white, and there is no room for discussion. The main story gets started when one of these cops hesitates to kill a young girl on the terrorist side and because of his brief lapse in his duty, she activates a bomb that kills her and causes severe devastation to the city above them. This starts a roller coaster of events that our main character Fuse has to live with, both the repercussions of his actions and he is haunted by nightmares of that young girl, all while beginning a unique relationship with the sister of that girl. Now you might think that this movie is a story about a man finding his empathy and humanity once again and breaking free of the tyrannical forces running the world, making him obey their commands. And to that I would like to say, you are in for something else. Before I get into it though, I do want to say that this movie's technical elements are fantastic. This movie looks incredible. There are times where it doesn't even feel like you're watching an anime. There's a certain way that the characters move and how the backgrounds are drawn and feel completely lived in and sometimes feel more like a functioning city than an actual city. Even creating the body language of the Cabarrus cops, who obviously show no emotions through their mask, 
and that's the point. But the movements with Fuse and a few other times, you can kind of get a sense of what they're thinking just of how their bodies move, which I think is really impressive. And also, as I was saying earlier, everything here feels very real. The violence that happens is chaotic and quick. There's no overly exaggerated fight scenes or martial arts in this film. The bullets fly and people die quick. There are some truly horrific gore moments, but everything happens so fast, it's more like a flash of hell before things go dark once more. Though most of the movie is very somber and slow-paced as a character story, so don't go into this expecting some kind of high-octane action or wild fight scene movie. Most all of the violence in this movie is one-sided, quick, and is just that. It's violence. And then there's Little Red Riding Hood. The symbolism and metaphors for wolves and packs are all over this movie, whether it's part of Fuse's vivid PTSD nightmares, or in the museums that they visit, or even in the names of particular groups that are given. The rebellion using young girls to transport bombs, those girls are called Red Riding Hoods. The Wolf Brigade itself being a deep undercover unit within the militant police force itself. The story of Red Riding Hood is told piece by piece, focusing on the wolf disguising itself as the grandmother to lure Red Riding Hood into its grasp. This is positioned periodically with the relationship between Fuse and Kay. And to say this movie is a love story feels like a bit of a stretch. To me, all the scenes with these two characters felt like a calming dream within the midst of reality. Fuse even has some of his nightmares intercut with scenes of them just hanging out together perhaps his true self trying to tell him that this will lead to a violent end, and at some point the wolves have to feed. You wonder what's going on with it. Is she leading him into a trap? Could her affection be fabricated? Or is she the one that's being used? Can there actually be a genuine affection and love in a world where everybody has hidden agendas and loyalties to authority high above themselves? And how can that submission to authority make even the most human of us obey to the level where we are just members of a pack? No individualism, but simply one in a unit of many. After all, a lone wolf very rarely survives in this world. This movie teases you with breadcrumbs of hope and brief moments of optimism, but constantly shatters them away bit by bit, leading to the climax which involves setups, corruption beyond measure, and a decision by Fuse that left me wanting to curl up into a ball and forget about humanity for a while. Not that that's different from my everyday routine, but this movie made me do it much earlier than usual. What I mean to say is, without spoiling anything, is that Jinro, The Wolf Brigade, is a deeply dark and depressing ride that is very different from your typical anime film, as even from this era. This is not an action film, this is not here to give you hype moments, this is a showcase of real decisions that real people make in real situations. This is about points of no return. This is about the brutally unfair separation of power between governments, police, and the average person. So if you're looking for a slower paced yet engaging movie that gives you some deeper concepts to think about, this will probably be right up your alley. Otherwise, I would go into it cautiously. But if you guys have seen Jin Ro, The Wolf Brigade, please let me know what you think about it down below. Also, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to stick around and see some more content. I do have an entire playlist of anime reviews, many from the 80s and 90s, with tons of recommendations there if you want to check it out. Also, check the links in the description for my Patreon and merch store if you want to support the channel, and various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.